you babes. Hi guys, welcome back to the love tech and welcome to the show. We've reached that time of the year again. It's time to get to know this year's London series participants. We did this last year ahead of in fact we're gonna get them because we can get them here now. <laughs> We did this for last year ahead of Fred Bird and Clark in London. Hi guys. So we did this for last year. We got you get, we did video on the Cubs and Carlos. So you know about them. Head of London. We're gonna do it again on this year for the Phillies and the Mets. And uh, of course, having now transferred to the Philadelphia Phillies from the Oakland A's, this opportunity for me to learn more as well as you guys at home. Um. And there we go, I'm going to be putting links to Inspector T's website in the video descriptions so you can learn a bit more for yourself. So, okay, so today we're doing the Phillies and then the next time we'll do the Mets. Okay, so here we go. So, so the Philadelphia Phillies were established in 1883. Mm -hmm. Just look, the team colours are red, white and blue. And they have been in Citizens Bank Park since 2004. Uh, but other ballparks they've been in over the years include the Veteran Stadium, which was in from 1971 to 2003, the Shibley Park, or the Connie Max Stadium, 1938 to 1970, the Baker Bowl from, 19, from, from 1887 to 1938, and Recreation Park, which has been from 883 to 886. The Phillies have currently won two World Series titles. The first of those came in 1980, when they also, you know, who um, they beat in these two titles. So, let's just bring them up. So, they won it first in 1980. When they defeated the Kansas City Royals in six games. And then they were in my very first year being involved with Major League Baseball. In 2008. When they defeated the Tampa Bay Rays in five games. 2008 was kind of, kind of what I remember as my first year being with Major League Baseball. But of course obviously was without a team. So I suppose a part of me can claim I was, I had the, I was, I was happy with the Phillies. And part of their success there. But... As I was a new, just a not affiliated with any club, just was going to be happy with anybody. But yeah, I think I think I was happy, happy as the Phillies were going to win rather than the double than the race. So anyway, uh, anyway, oh yeah, so two tight. Well, so tight. They've won eight NL pennants. The first came in 1915. Then they get then they wait until 1950 for the next one. Uh, then they're not getting 1980, 1983. 1993, then 2008, 2009. So, what? So, the Phillies were the very rare defending World Series champions in this in this century to go back to the World Series the year after. It's been quite tricky to do that. And their course, the last the most recent World Series course in 2022. That course was a very special year for the Phillies because obviously they were back at the playoffs for the first time in quite a while. What well, an incredible run! And it was also a bit of a special one for me because obviously in that 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 playoff year I was backing both the Padres and the Phillies. So the fact that these two teams met in the LLCS that year it was a relief. It was happy because I was like, yes, I'm going to have something to root for in the World Series. Um, and I was kind of really happy with the Phillies over uh, the Padres because I thought the Phillies they would have gone this magical Cinderella story which would have been really the catch on the World Series. But alas, that was the cheats. That was the cheats. Um. And they've had two wildcard berths both for the last two years in 2022 and in 2023. And of course, their mascot is the infamous Philly Fanatic. <laughs> what quite a handful he is. Um, I always say, I'm glad I'm on his, si on his side rather than against him because the Fanatic's not what you really want to kind of mess with. <laughs> At all, you really, really, really don't. Um, 
I'll just go through some of the all-time leaders and stats now. So we have got. Let's have a look. No way. Okay, so all-time leaders and stats for the Phillies. So Hall of Famer Richie Ashburn ranks third in Phillies history with 2.217 career hits with nine and 946 career walks. And let's see if there's any other all-time. Let's have a look at the other Hall of Famer, shall we? I'll look at them as well. I'll right, we'll go through the Hall of Famers. I'll look at those. So we have uh, Rich, Rich Yashberg, which, just talked, which we just uh, which we just talked about. There's also Sparky Anderson, Dave Bancroft. Dan Brubbers, Roger Connor, Ed Dahanty, Hugh Duffy, Doddy Ebers, Elmore Flick, Jimmy Tox, Billy Hamilton, Huey Jennings, Jim Cat, Chuck Klein, Nap Lodi. Tommy McCarthy, Joe Morgan, Tony Perez, Scott Rowland, Ryan Sandberg, Mike Schmidt, Casey Stengel, Jim Tom, uh, Sam Thompson, Lloyd Weiner, and finally, Hack Wilson. Those are the Hall of Famers uh, for the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, can also go through some of the all stars. Um, it's quite a long list, so I'll just go through because this because this dates back all the way to nineteen thirty three. So tell you what. I'll just read you the, the All Stars of the last five years. Uh, you can have a look at this yourselves on online. So the last five years, the Phillies All Stars have been in twenty twenty three: uh, Nick Castellas, uh, Craig Kim Kim Rob. In twenty twenty two, Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber. In twenty twenty one, TJ Renano and Zach Wheeler. Uh, obviously, nothing for 2020 because obviously no All Star game happened due to the pandemic. Either we did have a shortened season. Uh, so 2019, then JT Romano. 2018, and which is the last one I'll read, Aaron Nola. So that's the last five years. The, the list goes all the way back to 1933. So you can, so if you are going to have a look at this for yourselves, have a bit of scroll on your sides and see what All Stars for the Phillies in those years. Um, Phillies, of course, will be hosting the All Star Game in 2026. So, hmm, something for the diaries. Um, yeah. There's also a timeline on here as well, which goes all the way back to the very beginning. Um, which can be read for yourself. So it goes all the way so. It's quite lengthy. So if you've got some time on your hands, or if you're on the train to London, maybe you can maybe you can maybe, you can maybe have a read of it, provided your train has some Wi-Fi. Mine will not. I'm telling you now. My train for definite will not have Wi-Fi. So I'm just probably stick with I iPod. But yeah, there's a yeah on the timeline. Uh, it's grouped into the various decades. So it's go from the 1800s to the 1900s, 1910s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, uh, 60s, and 80s, 90s. And obviously the 2000s, then 2010s, and the 2020s. Um, although there probably won't be much of the 2020s uh, data because we're still very much in the thick of it. Um, yeah, it's quite lengthy, but um, it's well worth a good read if you've got a lot of time on your hands. Um, okay. 
there's that. Um, should we have a look at something else looking at that? Yeah, we've done. The, I did go through the ball list of the ballpark. I'll look at ballpark history. See if there's anything new I can mention that I haven't already done so. I'll go through ballpark history. So as I mentioned, it began at the Recreation Park from 1883 to 1886. Uh, University of Pennsylvania for 1894. Don't think I can't mention that one. Uh, Columbia Park from 1903. The Baker Bowl slash National League Park from 1887 to 1938. That had a capacity of 18,000. Uh, the Phoenix Baseball Park from its opening in 1887 until 1938. It was rebuilt in 1895 and hailed as the nation's finest stadium. It was, a site, it was the site of the first World Series attended by the US, by the US President. Uh, the 1915 uh, Negro League World Series. 1920, and then the 1924-26 Babe Ruth's last Major League game. 1935, Razed, 1950, Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission. Then the Shee Park slash Colony Max Stadium from 1938 to 1970. That's a capacity of 33,000. Uh, early Major League Baseball Park opening opened in 1909, renamed in 1953, home to athletics from 1909 to 1954. And the Phillies from 1926 to 1970. Site of three Negro League. Please tell me if I'm pronouncing these correctly because I don't want to find anyone. Uh, World Series. Five A's World Series victories because the A's actually pretty good. A lot successful in, in the Philadelphia the Phillies world despite the the Phillies came first. Uh, amongst first to host night games. Uh, raised 1976 uh, Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission. Then Veterans Stadium from 1970 to 2003. That whole is 62,623. Uh, built on a 74-acre site that was formerly uh, marsh land and opened in 1971. Uh, the multicoloured, multi-purpose stadium, the largest in the National League at the time, was completed at a final cost of about $52 million. Woo! And then Citizens Bank Park, which of course the Phillies have been since 2004. So this year they celebrated 20 years in, in Citizens Bank Foot Park. Uh, that was capacity of 43,500. Uh, Philadelphia's new world class ballpark is every bit as spectacular as it is intimate, with breathtaking views, dazzling amenities, and a staggering array of special features. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to go now through the uh, through the awards. So for most Bible player, some of these probably won't be a shock to you guys. Bryce Harper had to be up there. Uh, won that in twenty twenty one. There we go. Uh, Jimmy Rollins in 2007. Ryan Howard in 2006. Mike Schmidt in 1986. Mike, and then again in... Um, oh, Mike Schmidt went three times in 1986, 1981 and 1980. Uh, Jim Constani, 1950 and Chuck Klein in 1932. Uh, for CY, the CY Young Award... That has been awarded to these players. Roy Harday in 2010. Steve Bedrosen in 1987. John Denny in 1983. Steve Carter in 1982. He also won it in 1980 as well. And in 1977. And, 97, and in 1972. Rookie of the Year. We've got Ryan Howard who won it in 2005. 
uh, Scott Rowley were in 1997. Uh, Richie Allen in 1964. And Jack Stanford in 1967. That's the first award we've had no repeat says on there. Let's see if that continues. And then March of the year, we have Larry Boa. And also on that list, Jim. I've not got. I'm not, oh yeah, that's got the years there. Two thousand one for him. Jim Frogsonny in 1993. Danny Ozark in 1976. Dean March in 1962 and 64. The last list is Eddie Sauer in 1950. Just two players won the Hank Aaron Award. Bryce Harper in 2021 and Ryan Howard in 2006. Silver Slugger, we've got a couple, we've got all, oh, we've got a fair few here. Bryce Harper in 2023, so just this time last year. JT Rowe, they were the year before that in 2022. And so did Carl Schwartz, also in 2022. Bryce Harper went in 2021. JT Romo in 2019. Chase Utley in 2009. And again in 2008. And also 2007. Jimmy Rollins in two, also in 2007. Ryan Howard in 2006, also 2006, Chase Utley. Bobby Abra in 2004. Lenny Dzintra, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. He went in 1993. Darren Dawson in 1992. Dwan Samuel in 1987. Mike Schmidt in 1986. And again in 1984, and also in 1983, and 1982, and 81. Uh, we had company in 1981, also in 1981, were Manny Trillo and Pete Rose. Schmidt put it again in 1980, and then also in 1980 was Manny uh, Trillo. Uh, Gold Glove Award, that's been won by Zach Wheeler last year. And then the year prior to that, JT Rummel. He also went again in 2019. Jimmy Bullet, Jimmy Rollins, Jimmy Rollins, sorry, in 2012. Placido Palancio in 2011. Shane Victorino in 2010. Jimmy Rollins in 2009. Shane Victorino, also 2009. And then Jimmy Rollins in 2008. Shane Victoria, also 2008. Jimmy Rollins in 2007. Aaron Rowe, 2007. Bobby Avru, 2005. Scott Rowland, 2001. Uh, also in 2000 as well. Uh, Mike Lifora, 1999. Scott Rowe, 1998. This is a long list, by the way. Mike Schmidt in 1986 and in 1984 and 83. Manny Trillo, 1982. Mike Schmidt, 82. Barry Maddox. Oh, Gary Maddox, sorry. Gary Maddox, 1982. Steve Carlton, 1981. Manny Trillo, 1981. Mike Schmidt, 1981. Gary Maddox, 1981. Mike Schmidt, 1980. Gary Marks, 1980. I started, so I'll finish. It's a long list, this one. Manny Trillo, 1979. Bob Boone, 1979. Mike Schmidt, 1979. Schmidt's worth a lot here. Uh, and Gary Maddox, also 1979. Bob Boone, 1978. Mike Schmidt, 1978. Gary Maddox, 1978. Jim Cat, 1977. Mike Smith, 1977. Gary Maddox, 1977. Jim Cat, 1976. Mike Schmidt and Guy, 1976. Gary Maddox, 1976. Gary Maddox, 1975. Larry Bowen, 1972. Bill White, 1966. Ruben Amira, 1964. Bobby Chance, 1964. Bobby Wine, 1963, and that's the last one. Woo! Woo! Oh, 
Woo, that's the, and that's the last one of the awards! Woo! Oh, uh, that, was a, that was a long one I just finished off there! Wow! Woo! Okay. Um. What else can we give you? I think it's just retired numbers left to do. Uh, yeah. Oh, and oh, rivalries. We'll do that as well. Um, but we'll go through. Yeah. Yeah. I've just got retired numbers to give you, and then we'll go through some of the rivalries with the Phillies. So, the Phillies played their inaugural season in, in, in 1883, meaning they are one of baseball's oldest franchises. I'm alright. A lot of these franchises are that very, very old. You have to go back quite a long, long time. Still, they've retired only five numbers in that life, in that span. Well, Seven, if you include Grover, Cleveland, Alexander, and Chuck Klein. Uh, the Phillies have no official policy on retired numbers, although unofficially in the past couple of decades, they have said they will only retire players elected into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Because a couple of Phillies, I think, deserve it. But we'll have to think. Right, so we've got. Richie Ashburn, uh, who was number one, who uh, actually is no longer with us. He was born in night on March nineteenth, nineteen twenty-seven, and he died on September the 9th, nineteen ninety-seven. He played twelve years for the Phillies from nineteen forty-eight to fifty-nine, and was regarded as one well of the best lead-off hitters and defensive players in the game. Also played with the Chicago Cubs. Stay over there, Clark. Stay over there. <laughs> and, oh, surprise, surprise! The, the, New York, uh, the, uh, the New York Mets. I've got the year. He's with the Cubs from 1960-61 and played for the Mets in 1962. Ending his playing career in 1962 with a .306 average. And it's also got. It's also mentioned how he was obtained. So he was obtained by signing a three and a half thousand dollar bonus in 1945 as a catcher. Next up, we've got Jim Bunning, in who wore number fourteen. Um, we still, we're still with us. He's still with us. He was bought. Oh no! Oh wait, no. Hold on. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't say. It doesn't, it doesn't say. It, he was born on October 23rd, 1931 and was elected in the United States Senate from Kentucky in 1998. Is he, st is he still alive? Because it's not got... Because the, the first one, it's had a death date. It's not got... No, he is dead. Wait, hang on. Yeah, no, he is dead. He died 26th of May 2017. Oh, that's odd. Not put it, not put it here. But he's dead. Okay, right. Um, oh, don't tell me these are all dead dead, dead players. This is going to be a very dreary part of the show. Uh, oh, dear. Um, pitched in 17 major league seasons from 1955 to 1971 uh, with the Detroit Tigers. Uh Uh, 1955 to 63. Uh, the Phillies from 1964 to 67. And then 1971. The Pittsburgh Pirates from 1968 to 69. And the LA Dodgers in 1969. He managed in the Phillies minor league system for five years following his playing career. And how he was attained where well, he was acquired along with, with uh, Seagus Trollos from the, the Tigers for uh, for, uh, sorry, those initials. So, so he was acquired along with Gus Tradolos from Detroit for Don Demeter and Jack Hamilton on September 5th, 1963. 
Right, the next one. Oh, also dead. Number 15, Dick Allen. Born 9th of March 1942. Died. Very recently. He just died December 7th, 2020. Uh, Seven-time All-Star, winning the 1964 National League Rookie of the Year Award and 72 American League MVP honors. The latter as a member of the Chicago White Sox. He finished his 15-year career with a 2.292-0.338-0.534 uh, slashed line uh, 351 home runs and 1,119 RBIs. He is a tag when he signed in 1960 for a $70,000 bonus. Okay. Next one. Oh. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is another dead bloke. <laughs> Next is number 20, Mike Schmidt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me two seconds. Oh no, he's still alive! He's still alive! Oh, I forgot that it's not dead yet! Oh, hooray! My, let me tell you my shit. He was born September 27th, 1949. So he's nearly 75. He's still with us! Ooh. Oh, thank God there's at least one of these Hall of Famers that's telling my son that's not dead. Thank God for that. This would be a very dreary segment, this really would. Um. Played his entire 18-year career with the Phillies, establishing himself as the greatest overall third baseman in the game. He is a team when the Phillies' second-round selection in the June 1971 amateur draft out of Ohio University, where he was a shortstop. Oh. Next, 32, Steve Carlson. Let me just need to check. Why do I... Why am I having to check if all these players are alive or not? I sh mm. And everyone's still alive! Yay! Always, always, always new. Always, 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 it's going to be 80! It's going to be 80 this year! Woo! So number... 32, Steve Carlton, born 22nd December 1944. He's still alive, he's still with us. Uh, pitched 15 years with the Phillies from 1972 to 86. Broke in with the St. Louis Cardinals. Sit back down, Fred Bird. In 1965, also pitched for the San Francisco Giants. In 1986, Chicago White Sox. In 1986, Cleveland Guardians in 1987, and the Minnesota Twins from 1987 to 1988 before retiring in May of 1988. He attended when he was acquired from the Cardinals for Rick Wise on February 25th, 1972. Okay, next up we've got number 34, Roy Hadley. Oh, Ooh! no, this one I think is definitely still alive because he's not because he was born in the 70s. So I think he is still alive. I'm going to double check. I'm going to double check now. It's dread, dread. This is dread. Oh no, hang on. No, he's, he is dead. He is dead. Yeah. So close. So close. No, he's dead. Number 34, Roy Harday. Born May the 14th, 1977. Yep, I promised to look down the page. Died November the 7th, 2017. So, the day before I turned 21. Wow. Uh, pitched in 16 seasons. Don't, don't make it morbid than what it is. Pitched in 16 seasons with the Toronto Blue Jays from, from 1998 to 2009 and the Phillies from 2010 to 13. He was acquired from the Toronto Blue Jays for Kyle... Drayback, Michael Taylor, and Travis Demore on the 7th of 16th, last night. That's how he was attained. Right, do I dead? Oh, yeah, next one's dead. Number 36, Robin Roberts. They're all dead except for one this, this segment. Born 7th of 30th, 1926. Yep. Died May the 6th, 2010. 
pitched 14 years with the Phillies from 94 to 61. He also pitched for the Baltimore Orioles from 1962-65, the cheating Houston Astros from 1965-66, and back down Clark, the Chicago Cubs from 1966, before retiring at the end of that year. He was signed to a $25,000 bonus by the Phillies following a graduate, following graduation from Michigan State in 97. That's how he was obtained. And then the last two, these are, are, um, are ones that you could technically count. Um, does measure the total show how you, if you count these two players, it makes it seven retired numbers and rubber five. So you got Grover Cleveland Alexander, who is also dead. But he was born February the 26th in 1887 and died November the 4th, 1950. He pitched for 20 years in the majors, including two stints actually with the Phillies from 1911 to 17, so during the war, and then in 1930. Also pitched for the Chicago Cubs. Why are you two getting mentioned a lot? Pitched for the Chicago Cubs between 1918 to 26 and the Cardinals in 1926 to 29 before retiring after nine appearances with the Phillies in 1930. He was purchased by a Phillies for $750 from Syracuse Stars in 1910. You've got Chuck Klein, who was born who wore the uh who was born on the 7th, 1904, and died March 28, 1958. Uh, his career was a left-handed hitting outfielder who played in 17 seasons of the Mason, including 928 to 33. 96 to 69 and then 94 to 40 also during the World War with the Phillies. Also played for the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> 94 to 36. That bear is getting a lot of mentions today. He really is. And the Pittsburgh Pirates. 1939 before retiring after playing four games in 1944. It was purchased from um, Fit Wayne. For $5,000 in mid-Germany in 1928. That's was a ten. And then we've got... Uh, the last one to talk about. Uh, Jackie Robinson, number 42. In, in 1947, he became the first African-American to play in the major leagues in the middle, middle of the modern era. His number has retired throughout baseball in 1997. So we will have covered him on the two we did for Clark and Fredbert last year. We probably will cover this again we do the Mets. Uh, next time, uh, spell my mind. Play for Brooklyn Dodgers, 947 to 56. Uh, from his baseball hall of fame plaque, leading NL batter in 949, holds Bill DeMarc for second baseman playing in 150 or more games with nine with point nine nine two led NL in stolen bases in 947 and 949. Most player player 949, lifetime batting average point three one one. Joint record holder for most double plays by second baseman. One hundred plays nine fifty one led second baseman in double plays nine forty nine fifty and then fifty one fifty two. So like those all the time numbers. So we'll finish off by going through the rivalries. We did this obviously last year with obviously Fred Bud and Clark. We'll do it again with the Mets as well. So obviously this is a fierce rivalry. I'm just loving how for these World Series, sorry, these World Tours, sorry, these, I should say, sorry, not, not World Series. These World Tour Series, that's what I meant to say. I love how they are, how the league isn't just picking random t teams. They're actually really considering which are the best rivalries and will do that. Um, which is really, 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 really good. Um, so... You look at top rivals for the Phillies, and it will either be the Mets, who will be seen in London, or it's the Braves. I, right now, as a transfer, consider the Braves to be the bigger of the two. That's no disrespect to the Mets, but I feel like the Mets, it's more of a friendly rivalry, do I dare say? You can tell, you can tell I'm a transfer, but I'm saying the Mets is a friendly rivalry. Uh, but with the Braves... It's just like, don't mention Atlanta. Because of, cause they're the more... Mm, it's their guts. Kind of... Kind of thing. You, you, you get my... Uh, 
if you get my gif uh, there. Um, yeah. But that'd be, be like how when, when I talk about the sharks, I always talk about the ducks and kings. I say the kings were fierce rivals and ducks are kind of more of a friendly rivalry. Yeah, we're rivals, but it's not hate your guts. That's why I can't, how, how I can't see. I see the Mets as kind of the ducks of the of the, the and the king, race of the kings. So Mets is like, yeah, we're rivals, but we're not that hate your guts. Well, I might find differently in a few weeks' time. Well, for the Braves, it just was the Braves first this year. I think blood might get spilt. But anyway, uh, yeah, those are kind of say as the two main Phillies rivals. Um, so yeah, I'll have a look. We'll have a look at some of the others as well. Um, but those are kind of considered the uh, the top two. Um, In a way, and also it doesn't help the fact that obviously um, we've had two NLDSs now in a row. We've seen the Braves and knocked them off their pedestal. <laughs> Atlanta Brave fans can claim they're the best team to leave, but who's the better side when it comes to playoffs? <laughs> oh, please not this year. Please no. Okay, so the Mets are up there. So I'm going to go through top five for these rivals in front of the season. The Mets are up there. Uh, the Giants! Ooh! Oh, well, well, I, well I've already had. Well, that's fine. Because I hated their guts when I was back, back in my A's days. So I just hate them even more now. Because obviously now I have to see them more often. But, oh. Okay, this is kind of a new rivalry of the Phillies here. Uh, but it has been the major for quite some time. So, it all really started with a growing tension between the Giants, between all the Giants pitch, pitcher Jonathan Sanchez and Chase Utley. It involved a few hit by hit pitches and a home run. It wasn't until um, a National Series, National League Championship Series, where these two sides began to really take shape. So, the yeah, bench is cleared. Um, Okay, hang on, hang on. Wow, okay. Wow, wow, okay, right. So that would have been 2010 when those two of these maps, okay. Right, okay. So yeah, playoffs, playoffs there. A lot of these rivalries, it's because of pl it's playoffs that um, they um, forged. You got here, the Philadelphia A's. Well, because they would have won once part time. These two sides would have been rivals back once in time. You know, when the Oakland A's played in Philadelphia. So the Phillies came first in 1883. And then the A's followed later in 1901. But in two separate leagues. Um, and the Phillies were considered... As a, it was And the A's, it was considered a major rivalry. Um, you know, the City Series, as it was called, took place every year from 1903 until 1955 that's 40 game total when it is moved on to Kansas City now although it's a league play was ha, has brought back fierce competition between these two sides during the record season every few years um and the, it's it's not really there it's that, I mean I don't think I ever saw it my, in, when I was in, back in my A's days. There'd be a, there'd be like a fierce rival between these two sides. Not really, no. I always look look back at the things on during my A's days. Thought if I had to pick a national world of teams from a national league to be my team, it probably would be them. So yeah, and look at we are now. Twelve years later, we've come full circle. <laughs> happy days, happy days. I'm happy. I've moved on. Moved on. Uh, Braves, of course, we don't need to go about indeed about that. Now the last one. Oh, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yep. Pennsylvania rivalry there. So yeah. But really, if you ask me, you probably ask me who I think the top two Phillies rivals would be. It would be the Braves and the Mets. So, well, then we'll be seeing us London. So yeah. 
but the Mets, but the Mets rivalry, I see that as kind of like, yeah, we're rivals. There's not like, hey, yeah, guts. Although I might find out different in a few weeks' time. It's the Braves one that I see as the more kind of the bloody one, the more ferocious one, the more the one that's more like to get out of hand. Not helped by the fact the Braves like to think they rule the world when they don't. And the fact that obviously these last two post seasons we have obviously met them in the um LDS. And um before we go, Atlanta, remind me, how did that one turn out? Both times. Yep. Yeah, no, it went down. And of course last year I was able to watch game one on the BBC with all with all the other first games of the DS is nice. We need more of that on the BBC. We really do. We need more of that. Uh, there you go. There you go. So that is it. So like I said, I will put a link to the free site on the um, on that history page in the video description below so you can learn about it for your, them for yourselves. Uh, in case I'm not coming, you can have a track of Like I mentioned, the Thailand is there. Go and let me read that if you want to. I take, should be brushing up with that, shouldn't I? Yeah, but I've not got Thai. It's lengthy. It is lengthy on all the teams I've like They've got this Thai, which is great, but it's really, 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 really lengthy. So it's like, oh, I'm going to find time to read that. Do you know what, I might try before 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 we go. I'll try and so I can read it all and then now I can be up to date with my Philly's knowledge. Because I technically should be know this now because now I'm a Philly. Now I'm a Philly. Anyway. There you go. So that is a little get to know you about the Philadelphia Phillies. Um Yeah, so for all those of you who are gonna be with me, Team Phillies, you're welcome. Um so there you go. The next one, of course, like we did, like we did last year, we're both Fred and, Fred and Clark, Fred, Fred and Clark. So we're going to do obviously this year as well. The next show, we'll get, we'll, we will get to know all about the New York Mets. But that's it for today. Thank you for joining today's show. If you want to do comment, not subscribe to that. Comment, click on I'll try to ask when you can find the comment for the before four. You can ring the bell. Stay with the latest content. My official YouTube channel. Next time, I say, bye.